So we've got DeSantis. He's out there with the alligators hunting down the gay people. Then you've got the uh, mayor of New York City. And despite the murder and the rape and the crime and all that stuff and the high house prices and the disastrous economy, he's saying gays come here. We'll take you gays. We'll save you from scary alligator man Ron DeSantis. Uh, then we showed you how the White House lies and obfuscates the truth related to all that. But at least I was going, Dave, you got to find me a silver lining here. Thank God we have CNN, right? Because these people wouldn't lie to us. They wouldn't frame the issue completely dishonestly and confuse things and conflate things and push an agenda. That's not what they would do on CNN. There is an ugly history in the United States of portraying gays, lesbians, transgender people as perverts, as predators who are preying on children. And when I see some of the coverage in the last week, it seems to me they are just repeating an ugly history. Good morning, Brian. Yeah, it's, it's exasperating to watch all this go down. I can't believe that it's 2022 and we're still seeing LGBTQ families be framed as predatory or as uh, diversive or uh, I would say as uh, almost, almost perverted. I mean, that seems to be the message to millions of LGBTQ families by the actions of Governor DeSantis right now. And I, it's heartbreaking to watch because these are families who already struggle to get by day to day in the public square and now have their own government going after them just for existing. When I'm watching the Fox coverage this week, I'm thinking they know what they're doing. Like this is something that's very compelling and scary to their audience. Well, Brian, you're right. It's, it's brilliant framing because you can't argue with a parent's right to influence their child. Parents care deeply about their children. I'm a parent, I get it. And when you focus on this particular subset, kindergarten through third grade, again, it's very smart and it's strategic because most parents will say, well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It seems pretty common sense that we wouldn't be talking about sex or sexual orientation. But it, it sort of hides the, uh, the real intention behind the bill. And the thing about parental rights framing is that this is not the first time we've seen this in American history. If you frame uh, you know, critical race theory against parental rights, then people feel, okay, we have a right to be upset. If you think about, go back to segregation. Th there was a parental rights argument about, well, we shouldn't really be integrating and having our kids you know, in schools based on race because that will introduce another level of intimacy or relationship. Mm. And so when you go at that personal angle, you will actually get a lot of people who miss the sort of bigger picture behind what, what this bill is really about. And it has a chilling effect. Okay, so the reason I wanted to show you that is because that woman almost got it right. She almost got it right. That this stuff makes sense. It makes sense you would not want your kids to be taught gender theory when they're first graders and then have that hidden from the parents. It makes sense you would not want them being taught critical race theory in school and then have that hidden from the parents. Then she tries to link it somehow to slavery and racism and all of those other things. It's nonsense, it's nonsense. They want your kids. I'm not even saying it's because they're grooming them because they're pedophiles or whatever the hell everyone else is saying. I'm just saying they just wanna break children and they wanna break the family. I think that's pretty obvious. And let's not forget the Black Lives Matter website when this whole thing all started, all this crazy woke nonsense started over the last couple of years, used to have a section in it talking about destroying the nuclear family. These things are all connected. So they almost kind of got it right on CNN. But then at the end, she, but, you know, parents really shouldn't have to do something with that because it's really kind of hiding bigotry or something. I want to show you the two, the two chirons that they had here. Uh, now, this first one here, focus on parental rights chips away at gay rights. So let's just pretend you're the average CNN viewer and you're obviously not that bright and you don't really know what's going on and you just regurgitate talking points and all of that. One more time, throw it up. You would see that, you'd flip on CNN, right? And no one's really paying attention to CNN, but you flip it on and you go, my God, parental rights are chipping away at gay rights. Now that has nothing to do with this bill. There is no one coming for gay rights in Florida. Do you think that if Ron DeSantis and the other right-wing maniacs of Florida were saying, we're gonna jail gays. We are not gonna let gay people get married. We are not gonna let gay people have certain jobs. We are not gonna let gay people have kids. We're not gonna let gay people buy property. Anything that would actually make gay people unequal under the law. You think I might say something about it? I assure you that I would. I assure you that I would. This is about indoctrinating children from state employees and then hiding that from the parents. So that, that Chiron is an absolute lie. And by the way, throw it up one more time. You see how they're, they're contrasting these things so that they're, they're trying to train you 
to think that parental rights are bad or that parental rights are in conflict with gay rights, which is insane. Gay rights used to just be about equality. The gays of Stonewall, I know this is, I can't wait till the Media Matters hit piece on this one. The gays of Stonewall would be horrified by what's going on right now. They were fighting for equality. They were fighting to be equal under the law. They were not fighting for all of this other nonsense. That really is the truth, okay? It really is. Those people who were being arrested because they were going to bars and as consenting adults meeting other people and trying to be in equal relationships, that's what it was about. It had nothing to do with any of this. So the media is now trying, they're trying to show you that parental rights are scary and in conflict with the thing that you better worship the most, which are gay rights. And by the way, we have gay rights. It's equal. We're good. Let's go to the other Chiron for a second. The LGBT community latest to be caught in the culture war. Now, first off, look at these two people. I just want to be clear. I, I have nothing to do with either one of these dudes. And I mean that as a, uh, as a newscaster or whatever I am, or as a supposed member of the LGBT community. Um, but the LGBT community latest to be caught in culture war. They brought the culture war to us. The gay thing was basically over. And, and this is why you twisted mother. Ugh. The gay thing was over. Donald Trump in 2016 was on stage before becoming president with a rainbow flag saying he did not care who you marry, saying that he didn't care about trans bathrooms because he's a builder. And if he was building a hotel and you told him he only had to build one bathroom, he would be thrilled because it would save him money. Peter Thiel, an openly gay man, spoke at the RNC convention where they nominated Donald Trump and said he is a proud gay man and got a standing ovation, standing ovation. I've discussed that with him privately many times. He was shocked. He did not know what was going to happen when that happened. And he got a standing ovation, okay? This thing was done. It doesn't mean that every conservative has to agree with gay marriage and it doesn't mean that we have to trample on your religious liberty and all of those things, but this shit was over and these people are dragging it back in because this has nothing to do with equality anymore.